Hi, I'm Nikki with another WPI technique. WPI's oxygen sensors are used in labs around the world for measurements in vivo and in vitro. Let's go over the steps required to get your oxygen sensor ready to use. The tip of the sensor contains both the oxygen sensing element and a separate reference electrode. These are enclosed by a 2 millimeter sleeve filled with an electrolyte. A gas permeable polymer membrane on the end of the sleeve allows oxygen to pass through while blocking liquids, ions, and particulate matter. The startup kit contains everything you need to prepare the sensor, including a bottle of electrolyte solution, a syringe, and a microfill non-metallic filling needle. Draw up a small volume of solution, about one milliliter, enough to fill the sleeve. Tap the syringe to shake loose any trapped air bubbles and move them upward. Then eject a few drops of fluid to make sure any bubbles are expelled. Insert the microfill into the sleeve as far as it will go, so the solution will fill the sleeve from bottom up to avoid trapping air bubbles near the membrane. After filling the sleeve, tap it a few times to move any air bubbles up and away from the membrane. Insert the sensor into the sleeve. Some electrolyte will spill out during this step. Tighten the locking cap to the sensor. The tip of the sensor will just slightly push on the membrane. Before the sensor can be calibrated, it must be allowed to polarize for at least an hour. Connect the ISO-OXY2 sensor to the TBR4100. Set the probe select to oxygen and set the range to 100 nanoamps. The OXLP sensor is functionally identical to the ISO-OXY2, but has a different connector because it plugs into a different meter. WPI's ISO-2 dissolved oxygen meter. On the ISO-2, Set the select switch to nanoamps and the power switch to on. Because the sensors are identical, the calibration procedure is the same. Fill a small vial with about 20 milliliters of 0.1 molar PBS solution and place it on a magnetic stirrer, stirring gently. Lower the sensor carefully into the solution to avoid contact with the magnetic stirrer. To monitor the sensor's polarization, start recording data. After an hour, the recorded data should show a stable baseline between 16 and 80 nanoamps. The polarized sensor is now ready for the next step in preparation. Before it can be used in an experiment, it must be calibrated to determine its precise sensitivity and operating temperature. In the standard calibration protocol, the sensor will take measurements in three solutions with known concentrations of oxygen. A solution saturated with air has a 20.8% concentration of dissolved oxygen. This is the solution in which the sensor was polarized. In addition, we'll prepare a solution saturated with 100% dissolved oxygen and another with zero dissolved oxygen. Prepare a solution of 100% dissolved oxygen by bubbling with pure oxygen. To have 0% dissolved oxygen, bubble that solution with pure nitrogen. To ensure that the solutions are fully saturated, bubble for at least 10 minutes. Immerse the sensor in the 0% solution and record the data for 5 minutes. Now, return the sensor to the 21.8% solution for 5 minutes and record the data. The oxygen measurements should return to the baseline value. Next, place the sensor into the 100% solution for 5 minutes. Finally, return the sensor to the 21% solution for 5 more minutes before you stop recording to ensure that the baseline has returned to its 21% value. The baseline recordings for the three samples with 21% dissolved oxygen should all be the same. Here is where the sensor was in the 0% solution. And here it is in the 100% solution. 
determine the current at these three levels, and enter those values into an Excel spreadsheet. Select all the data and use a menu command to generate a scatter plot. Then select the line, right click, and choose Add Trend Line. Select Linear, select Display Equation on Chart, and Display R Value on Chart. The slope of the curve indicates the sensitivity of the sensor. Now the sensor is ready for use experimentally. If you have any other questions about WPI's biosensors, please contact us and be on the lookout for the next WPI technique. Thanks for watching.